I'm back. This time I'm outside my shed. Um, the last video I did, my brother had called me and said, hey, you know, you showed us all the pottery, the bisque fire, and stuff like that, uh, the greenware, but you never showed us <laughs> the final product. So I thought I'd show you the final product today. Um, you know, you've seen, I, I'll do a slide by here real quick. This is some of the stuff I've done. It's really nice, actually. Uh, <clears throat> this is some of the first stuff I've done. Some of the smaller stuff you'll see in here is just uh, things that I tested glazes on, but they're like little shot glasses, toothpick holders, stuff like that, bowls, vases. Again, like I've gotten really much better at a lot of this stuff. So, um, you know, here I am now. I'm going to show you some of the stuff a little closer, what I've done in some of the glazes I have here. So let me turn around and pick out one of these things. This is a small bowl I did not too long ago. As you can see, it has a foot. I'm sorry, I'm going to look at the camera. And I'm looking the other way. So, and here is some of the, uh, the finished product there. Um, if I can show you some light on it, maybe it'll help. But, uh, but there's some of that beautiful glaze that you see with the greens and the browns. That was a glaze that I did at Cone 5, a Cone 6. Um, you know, this was in a kiln for quite a while, probably about 10 hours. Then it was bisque before that. This is a wonderful glaze. I love this glaze. It's very earthy looking. Uh, just wonderful. Here's another example of how it settles on, you know, nothing's quite actually the same. Uh, this one actually settled a little bit differently on it, but there's more greens, as you can see in that one. I did a paddle on the edge here. It first was round, and I paddled it, paddled it, paddled it, it made a nice little hole. It's like a wonderful glaze inside there. I don't know if you can see that or not, but got this cream brownish color inside it just came out really nice and lustry this actually was fired twice glaze fired twice another one that was glaze fired twice actually was this little jug here the first time they were glaze fired they didn't come out right I took it to a lady she did oxidation uh, they didn't come out right so I put them in with my other stuff that I do reduction with and they come out like this wonderful they came out real fuzzy with her i'm not sure if she had the right ramping or went up too too low she didn't go high enough or something this is what they look like now it's nice another variation again of the browns this time you see some really neat greens on top again this stuff looks really different in the sunlight you take it in the sunlight it will look just absolutely gorgeous Maybe I'll do some in the sunlight later, at, you know, why this video is going to show you. But it's, this is a really nice piece. Now we're going to blue and green. This is a blue and green. This is, again, all reduction fired. Blue and green, this is a really beautiful blue. As you can see, it has a little stripes of green in there. This is like a shot glass or sake glass. You know, it's just wonderful. Wonderful piece, I love it. Just perfect for drinking little shots. Then we have a pour, or whatever you want to pour sake. And pour that with this. I made this handmade. This one's handmade, it's not on the wheel. Um, actually just did that with my hand, so all carved out, what have you. You can tell it's not on the wheel because it's not perfectly round on the bottom. Although you can change that after the wheel, you can paddle them in. I made the ridge, everything, it's just a beautiful little piece. And you can use it for whatever, you know. I got the vase. This is a brown chino. It has some greens in it. Uh, this is a really nice piece. Again, this is all cone five, cone six. Wonderful piece, I love it. And the rose smells really nice too. Different kind of style here with the fingertips. Uh, I use it's kind of a fluted kind of design with lots of blues and greens. Sorry, I'm looking at the monitor just to make sure that that's why my eyes keep creeping over, just to see if I, you're actually seeing the colors. Because some of these colors are just fabulous, they're just absolutely gorgeous. You know, you've got this white, I mean, the brown top there, right inside that I Again, I had to put about three or four coats of, of the uh, finish on that. That's a wonderful piece, little vase. I was talking to my brother about pieces that came out looking like jade. It was like really interesting. Uh, these came out looking like jade. These have my emblems on the bottom. And uh, this one does anyways. 
It's really a cool piece. Uh, it's a little different. It's just, it's just hard to show you on the camera what it really looks like. I mean, it's just, it looks like jade. I mean, it's just incredible. Uh, so there's a couple other pieces. Then I went for a hand painted uh, glaze, which was kind of a turquoise color. So you got turquoise there. Got some turquoise out of the kiln. Again, this is reduction fired. This is a hand painted glaze with a clear coat. And you'll see the bottom has a nice little white spot. So you can see the end of your glass when you're done with your little shot or sake or whatever it is. If this one's a real small one. You can hold toothpicks, little sake, whatever. This one's gonna be probably hard to show you, but it's it's a black and green. This is the one I was telling my brother. It kind of turned out like an amethyst color. It's just got this wonderful, these wonderful glows of green coming through this black, and I punched it. This was on the wheel, and then I punched the ends in. So it uh, kind of has that Japanese teacup look. I don't like everything to be just perfect. If you can see that, I mean, it's just gorgeous. Maybe I'll show you this one in the sunlight. This one is totally different in the sunlight. So we'll show you that one in the sunlight. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I'll put that one aside. This one was really cool. I used a black chino. This was done again twice. The lady that did it for me didn't do it right. So I brought it home and did it the way I like it a second time. And I don't know if you can see that, but the blues have come out on this. This is another one I might have to show you in the sunlight. This is a black, and then there's blues coming out. These really nice turquoise, almost, well, iridescent blues. I, I don't know how to explain it. It's just incredible how they came out. So this is definitely a glaze I'll use again. Dark brown interior. I'll show you on the sunlight. That's another one I'll put aside. Those are two I want you to see in the sunlight. It's absolutely gorgeous. This is an oil spot glaze. I don't know if I was too wild over it. This is the vase though. I like the vase. Just the oil spots, you know, they come out with little black spots. Kind of interesting, very colorful. If you get it in the sun again, something you could put outside on the patio, put some uh, flowers in it and really bring out the colors. I'll show you that one in the sunlight in a minute. I'm trying to go through this kind of fast because I don't want to bore anybody. Again, one another vase I have made that looks like amethyst with this green stripes going through you can probably see this one pretty good it just looks like a stone like it was carved out of a stone and then polished feels like a stone it's very it's kind of thick actually it was one of my first ones do have a little one of my older signatures on the bottom when i first started uh when i thought this vase was something i was happy with i started going well let's see i'm going to start signing my pottery because i kind of like it now all the other ones i kind of threw back in started all over again then I got to this style and said, you know, I think we'll start signing pottery. So that's when I did that. And then I made my little stamp I showed you in my last video. If you watch my last video, I go through all my bisque fires and some of my stamps, my stamp I use. Here's a really nice piece. Again, you might have to see it in the sunlight, but this is a blue. This one's on Etsy, actually. It's a beautiful piece. Um, has a rose in it now, but... Uh, yeah, this is a beautiful piece with dark brown interior, the light brown and greens, and just cycling around how I use my fingers on top of this. We got a really good, like, circle, like, rim going, going, going. This is another one I could probably show you in the sunlight. And I had a bear in my last one that wasn't glazed. This is the bear I told you about. It was kind of boring, the bear glaze. <laughs> probably need to do this one again in the kiln with something different maybe some stuff dripping down it or something it's just something it's just it's neat but it's just boring it's kind of a boring bluish gray I don't know just what the kiln wanted to do so I thought it was gonna come out this really interesting blue with the kiln dampen the color because it's reduction as you can see there's some marks from the kiln which is cool I like that but the color itself needs to be a little help so we might have to do this one again and it's no problem, you can do, you know, refire two, three times, but the more you do refire um, in a kiln, the, 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 uh, the pottery starts to weaken. So you don't want to really go over, I've heard three times, two times, I like two times. I don't know if I'll go to three ever, but it's something that you have to think about when you're firing, that uh, if you want to get some interesting art look or whatever, you can try two, three times. And it takes a while for the glaze to adhere, so you have to put that glaze on, wait for a long time for it to dry. Uh, it's not like bisque it's very tricky but it does come out interesting sometimes better 
Um, it depends, it could come out worse. So <laughs> it's like 30% artist, the rest kiln, right? So really we're not the boss over what the glaze does, but I found some pretty nice glazes by testing these. And I think with my bigger pieces, these will be very adequate for them. Here's another piece here. It's just a small, you know, toothpick holder. Interesting little shape. I think I might make something that it goes into or fits into, or I don't know. We'll see what happens. One of my first bowls is like a dog bowl or a kitty bowl. Uh, very nice. Uh, some people don't like to use dog bowls and kitty bowls that are ceramic or glass because it could break and you know we know what happens after that it could ingest it so be very careful if you buy ceramic or glass bowls for your animals um, that they're kind of supervised or you know just don't leave them alone with stuff like that because if it does break it could be you know not good so anyways I mean these bowls are fun you could put peanuts in it for yourself as a party bowl but you like if you're you know desperate for a bowl for your animal you could fill it up with water just kind of supervise don't leave it down there for too long um, it's just a word of caution and I'm gonna have to say red is probably the hardest color in the kiln I finally got a piece that's red but do I like it no I don't like the shape <laughs> I like this shape but look what happened on the hot side it bubbled so bubbling is not good even though it's kind of interesting, gives it some personality, but that is a mistake. It's on the hot side. The other side was on the interior. It didn't bubble as much. It was on the bottom shelf. It got, so now it's a candle holder. It works, it's functional. It holds water. It's one of my old signatures. It's kind of cool. It's got personality. But this here, you know, with a lot of bouquet of flowers in it, it doesn't look bad at all. It's just kind of boring by itself. It's not something like you'd want to put on the shelf and say, oh, what a wonderful vase. Oh, there goes my light. Anyways, I think we have enough light here. So, um, I'll just shut that off. So anyways, uh, that's kind of the reds. The reds, they're hard, very hard. <laughs> Especially in oxidation, I mean on reduction. Uh, it's just hard, but I think I've got it down. Second shelf, middle. Just need a better design and we'll see what happens. Then I had this vase. What a beautiful, this oil spot again, oil spot glaze, the vase. The reason for this dust coloration on the bottom is because um, it cracked and I tried to save it by reglazing it and uh, it still looks pretty good, but it's it was cracked. Things do happen in the kiln, a little split on the bottom, but it came out gorgeous. It came out really pretty. Um, if I do enough glaze on it, you probably won't even, I can't even see the crack actually, but but if I put more glaze on, like I said, when you overglaze like this, sometimes things look good, sometimes it doesn't. So, I mean, look at that. It's it's oil spot. It's cool. It's coming through the yellows. Kind of looks like a landscape on the bottom. Maybe I should keep going up with it and reglaze, refire it again. I'm not sure. Um, I really do have some nice faces, so I don't know if I'm going to do this one again. I've got some bigger ones now and that are lighter and I think will work better than this one anyways. But it's fun. So hold a lot of pens, pencils. It's functional. It's just, you know, it's got a crack. It's right there, I think. Anyways, that's the pottery right now that I've shown you, this that I've done. Now, if you want to see how I do this stuff, um, like I said, I'm still learning a little myself. But if you want to see how I do some of this stuff and do it on the wheel, we'll do that on my next show. We're going to do some wheel work. Uh, I'll show you how to center the clay, show you how I do it, show you how I pull it out, how I build it up, how it turns into something like this and then goes into the, the kiln to get fired, this fired, and then it comes out, and then you go with the, the next thing with glazing and painting and glazing, and we can go over that, and then we can fire that and show you how to fire that and show you what they look like after. If that's the way we want to go, let me know. It sounds like fun to me, but uh, if you'd rather go out on the road, which we could do too, and look at other things, pottery, scenery, getting ideas for an artist, uh, those are all the things I like to do. So stay tuned, I'll keep you informed, and hopefully, You'll get out there and play with some clay or get your photography out. That's fun too. Go out and take some pictures. I mean, art is just fun. So have some fun out there and uh, I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.